Hi, my name is Aaron, and today I'll be talking about tuberculosis. So here is the table of contents. Um, so first of all, tuberculosis is a bacterial infection caused by mycobacterial tuberculosis, and it affects the lungs, but can spread to other parts of the body. So originally we found, we found this in Egyptian mummies dating back to around 2400 BC. It was discovered by Robert Koch in 1882, and it was rampant in the 18th and 19th centuries. And eventually, there was a sanatorium movement which advocated for the isolation and treatment of TB patients in specialized facilities. And we eventually discovered streptomycin, which was used to treat TB. And we eventually started developing the BCG vaccine. And recently, there has been the emergence of multi drug resistant and extensively drug resistant tuberculosis. About 10 million people worldwide fall ill with TB and around 1.5 million died in 2020. It, there have been 65,000 new cases of multi-drug resistant TB in 2020, and this is actually our latest problem concerning TB. It costs the global economy billions of dollars annually, particularly in low- and middle-income countries. So tuberculosis is actually very resilient. It's capable of surviving in the body in a dormant state for years, and its cell wall is thick and waxy, which contributes to that because it protects from the immune response and makes it resistant to many common antibiotics. It's transported, uh, it's, it's, it's transmitted through airborne transmission. Uh, when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks, there will be these droplets that hang in the air. And only people in, with active TB with the lungs are contagious. So, so this primary infection, when T when T too close enters the lung, it enters the alveoli. And then the macrophage is part of the innate response. It will phagocytose the TB, but it can actually survive in these cells. It can either stay in, the, stay in the cell and the macrophage survives, and so it can continue to proliferate, or it could cause the macrophage to like, uh, have progressed cell death, or necrosis, in which it can spread and infect other cells. So, latent TB infection, many people experience this. So then the TB is sort of managed, it's sort of contained, and it doesn't spread or anything, and there's not really many symptoms. So as a result, it's just sort of inactive in the body. However, this can change to active TB disease, where if your immune system is weakened enough, it can become active and cause active, it can cause problems, like and symptoms and transmission too. You may experience persistent cough, chest pain, uh, coughing up blood, weight loss, fever, and nightmares. So to diagnose TB, we've, we have a skin test, which involves somebody, in, uh, a healthcare uh, worker, injecting uh, tuber uh, tuber uh, tuberculin into your skin. Um, and this causes a reaction or a bump, right? And depending on the size of the bump or how long it takes for it to, to go away, we can determine if the person has, uh, a, uh, has TB or not. There have been uh, uh, blood tests, chest x-rays, and sputum tests to look for signs of TB. So to treat TB, uh, there are, we treat with antibiotics. Some common drugs are isoniazid, rifampin, uh, ethambutol, and pyrazinamide. Uh, these antibiotics actually have a pretty long course of treatment of at least six months. Mm. And if you miss, uh, since we've been misusing and mismanaging some antibiotic treatments, We've had to deal with multi-drug resistant and extensively drug resistant TB. And they have been very significant problems because TB is pretty easily spread. And coupled with drug, drug resistance, this could be fatal. So to prevent this, we've been working on vaccinations. Currently, only the BCG vaccine is approved. And it's effective in children, uh, and it varies in effectiveness for adults. And we've been, we, we should uh, start doing more public health measures such as screening and treatment of late, latent TB infection, especially in high risk populations. And we should improve living conditions and reduce exposure in high risk settings. If you think you're exposure, uh, if you think you're at risk of exposure to TB, you should, uh, you should wear uh, respirators, which is used in, in the cases of airborne transmission. So some emerging technologies are the gene expert mtb RF assay. It's a molecular diagnostic test that quickly detects TB and uh, rifampicin resistance. There, we've been working on using AI to analyze chest x-rays to see, uh, look for signs of TB infection. We've been working on a mobile, we've been working on 
ways to help people adhere to treatment better. Because if people do not finish the course of treatment, not only does it not not, not only does it make sure like, let some of the TB survive in the body, which can cause it to like spring up again, it also leads to development of drug resistance, which is mm. a major problem. We've been working on whole genome sequencing, so we can have a comprehensive analysis of the genetic makeup of the TB bacteria. And finally, we've been developing new vaccines other than the BCG, which could be so if we have more effective vaccines, we can better counter the TB. So, food. TB is getting more and more dangerous every day, so we need to invest more to address this threat. We, we have, uh, anybody, does anybody have any questions? So I have a question. Do, after six months treatment, so you are clear, totally like forever? Well, it depends. Um, some of the treatment might take longer than six months, right? Some of the treatment might take a year or two. Mm -hmm. But generally, you are you're, if you finish your course of TB, you should, you should be fine. Okay, thank you. Thanks uh, for listening. And that's it for today's public talk forum.